This week we're turning our attention towards fine art photography. What exactly is fine art photography? Well, that is a very uh, difficult question to answer. Um, it's a little bit all over everywhere. From um, the different types of uh, stylized interpretations that you can have, from the different types of, of uh, black and white and color, uh, visual illustration where we're combining a variety of different images, uh, stark documentary can be called even fine art. It almost defies um, description in many ways. So we're going to take a little look at some of this stuff here and take a look. Even in the commercial area, uh, you can find examples of uh, what you might call fine art. I guess the easiest way really to describe it is it creates a photograph that intrigues, that perhaps abstracts reality into something that's totally different, unique, totally challenging the senses, so to speak. Um, like this photograph of these glasses. Now when you photograph glass, uh, or crystal in this case, you know, you're really photographing the shadow is what it amounts to because you can't see you I mean there's nothing to the glass it's totally transparent so you're really photographing the light and how it portrays around the subject well that's an abstraction black and white for that matter is an abstraction we live in a world of color and yet when we photograph and we present it in black and white we have transformed that subject from the emotional content of color to the somewhat unbiased supposedly um, colors of gray and while we all know that that's not exactly true you accept or reject a photograph quickly probably that is no more uh, imperative that quick rejection of reading an image than in the fine art world we see it in journalism as well many times but lots of times what we're dealing with in fine art photography is abstraction and how your mind perceives the image when maybe you don't have all the context involved that you might have say in documentary or sports or commercial. So again different types of fine art go in different directions. Now what you see lots of times in galleries many times or online are photographs that are outlandish that they're like more than what you ever really would think about. Um, you know, like dreamscapes and things like that. Total, the total uh, abstraction from reality, or something like this that is that is uh, almost on some levels almost disturbing and stuff. But sometimes the more outlandish, the more things qualify as fine art. But also there can be the strict pl uh, plain portrayals of imagery and this can be called fine art. In other words, somebody can hang anything on a wall and call it fine art. And and this is this is its strength and probably its weakness because we all have seen pictures that someone will claim to be fine art and we look at it and say, "Really? Really? You think that's art? Really?" Um or sometimes it's how someone else portrays something like this helmet in the British Museum of the Gladiators uh, mask. There's a haunting quality to this that really goes beyond just the exhibition when I shot it years ago. And uh, like for instance this photograph, uh, I, have it, I have it all matted up and fixed and everything and my wife doesn't want it in the house because it freaks her out. You know, so I have to put it somewhere else. But whatever fine art is, it is always different and challenges our senses. It takes us into a different area. It, it, it should move us, if not emotionally, then it should move us in an aesthetic manner. And sometimes it repulses us. Sometimes it's like, really? Now why would somebody do something like that? This is kind of one of those examples there. And again, I found, these on, I found some of these online that I thought were just interesting. Some are mine, but many of them I found online. And they are very interesting uh, abstractions or examples of fine art. Now, as is my um, tradition here or my way is I always like to give you some examples of great fine art photography from the past and what a better place to start is Edward Weston. Edward Weston was a was a purveyor of what they call the West Coast tradition which has its feet uh, in uh, nature and in things that grow and biologicals and botanicals and things like that. Weston was a photographer, lived in Monterey, lived in Mexico, 
for many number of years. This is probably one of his most famous photographs called Pepper Number 29, of which there were 65 peppers, I believe, that he went to the farmer's market and brought back a bushel full of peppers and set about to photograph them on his drain board in his house in uh, the Monterey Bay area. And just the light and the way he figured this, I mean, different people look at this different ways and there's an abstraction. Some people see a torso, some people see a, fat, a fist, some people see two lovers. There's a variety of different things you can see in this photograph. Weston had a uh, unusual method and an unusual way of portraying the world. It was very bleak in some respects, uh, very arresting in its nature, and arresting is a good word for fine art photography, to how to judge a good fine art photography. If it arrests your attention, that's good. And that can be said of almost any photograph, but in fine art, I think that's true more than anything else. Um, <clears throat> again, the West Coast tradition centered a lot on nature and uh, nature's beauty and simplicity, like the dunes here. I believe these dunes are Oceano, but I'm not positive. Um, and, and, and that was where Weston's work evolved in the Big Sur area and along the, along the coast. And he did fantastic work. And if you ever get a chance to see an Edward Weston show, go see it because it's very unique in his method and printing. Of course, fine art for our area of California wouldn't be complete without talking about Ansel Adams. And Ansel Adams was, I like to call him, the master of the print. He spent 50, 60 years gathering images and 25 years printing them. He's basically known for his work in Yosemite and uh, environs, but he worked all over the West. He also worked in color. Most people don't know that, but uh, his strength was always black and white. But he worked primarily in the West, capturing the grandeur of it. Now, a lot of people would lamp, lump these all into landscapes and scenery, but on a higher level than that, they are fine art. In fact, if you get to see a print of Ansel Adams' work, it actually glows. There was a real science and a technology of how he brought about the print. One of his most famous photographs is Moonrise Hernandez right here. Um, and maybe later on in the course I'll give you the backstory and how this one got made. Uh, fascinating tale. But, you know, just the use of light is the artistry of, of Adam's work. You know, again, finding the right location, being there at the right time, being patient uh, with the light, and yet then knowing what to do with it was the secret to Adam's work. Now, most people look at his work and say, oh, it was grandeur and big and great. Well, no, there were a lot of things that were simple little uh, slices of life, like this rose on a piece of uh, uh, wood, or even um, water drops on a fern plant. I mean, he did a lot of, he did micro and he did macro stuff. So if you ever get a chance to look at a lot of Ansel Adams' work, you'll see the diversity there that is really, really exceptional. Really exceptional. Now, the last one I'm going to talk about is Joel Meyerowitz. He's more contemporary. He is still alive today. Uh, and he's really the innovator of street photography and color photography. Now, street photography is a certain genre of fine art where the photographer literally takes his camera out into the street and photographs whatever he sees. I like to pick out Meyerowitz because I feel, I, I, I've looked at a lot of people's work on street photography and lots of times it is just a grab shot of chaos. And it, to me, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, like Lee Freelander and some of these other guys. Uh, they have some really great shots, but some of them aren't quite as methodical as Joel Lieberwitz's street photography. Joel Meyerwitz, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, Joel Meyerwitz's photography. Um, but he truly was an innovator. But more recently in his career, he was an innovator of color. Now, at face value, his work, as far as fine art, is going to look very bland you know, very common. It's like it's a snapshot. But again, with all things with fine art, you have to look beyond the obvious and you have to look at the photograph from a standpoint of art, which means it's a captured interpretation by the artist for you to enjoy at a different level. And Meyerowitz was quite good at that. Now, another one example, this is one of his most famous photographs and it's called Man Falling Down the Street in New York, something like that. And Essentially, you have an, a, a, a busy street scene in New York, and you have this poor guy that tripped, and guys are stepping over, everybody's basically ignoring him. That's New York, to Meyerowitz. And it's an interesting fraction of a moment. Now, you could call this documentary, you could call it fine art, you could call it a variety of different things. Meyerowitz likes to call it fine art. But 
again, it's always in search of a statement. One of his older street photography pictures is this one. Um, you have to look at this one for a while to gain ever, all the information out of it, uh, but it's a really interesting study of human nature in, in the big city. So Meyer Woods is really a really interesting photographer to do. But again, at first, at first glance, you would look at some of these and you would say, no, these aren't very good. No, these are just like little quick snapshots. Well, look deeper. Spend more time. Again, be an observer of the photograph and think about it. I mean, little bitty car, huge shake, shakes. Look at, I mean, you know, there's an incongruent aspect to every one of them. F fine art photography defies description on many terms. I mean, I don't know that you can come up with a term that says, oh, well, that is fine art because there's so many different ways of doing it. But it can challenge our visual senses on new levels. And that's what a good fine art photograph photograph should do. It should challenge the senses, not just the visual, but take you back in time or push you forward in time. It should arrest your attention in such a way that you can't let go of it. It can either allow us to suspend reality or, at a different level, confront it brutally on our own terms. And, you know, this is where the genre of fine art photography is really just all over the place. And uh, it's really up to the viewer to determine whether something is really fine art or not. And then lastly, and most importantly, and again, you can say this probably for all photography, it gives us a moment of reflection to see something frozen in time that we might not have experienced or perhaps we missed. And so fine art photography is really kind of like putting jello, nailing jello to a tree. You know what I mean? It just, it's really hard to pin down. So basically, if the, if the person who takes the photograph decides to call it fine art, hmm, I guess it is.